big hello and welcome to our Top Church service online today. I am so pleased that you have decided to tune in. Wherever you are and whoever you are, you are so welcome to be worshipping along with us for our service today. I'd just like to remind you that we are now meeting in church on a Sunday as well. So if you would like to come along in person, then um, we have a booking system online. We meet at 9.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. every Sunday. And if you'd like to book in, then just visit our website, topchurch.co.uk and click on our services and you'll be able to do that. We would absolutely love to see you there in person. For our online service today, we're going to be continuing the series that we started last week, looking at our vision and our values again. So James is going to be bringing us a reflection on what it means to be a thriving Anglican church. Um, and we're also going to be looking at our values over the next few weeks. So do make sure that you tune in to hear all about those two. It's everything that we at Top Church hold dear. We're also going to be sharing in a time of sung worship and of course a time of prayer together. And Claire is going to bring something for our youth and our children. But as we start our worship together, let me pray for us. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join in the opening liturgy together. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. I It's an open heaven, Lord, releasing, we will never be denied. Because we're stirring up deep, deep wells, we're stirring up deep, deep waters, we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, we're stirring up We're gonna jump in the river, jump in the river. We sing deep cries out, deep cries out to, deep cries out, deep cries out to. We cry out to, we cry out to you, Jesus. We sing deep cries out to, deep cries out to, deep cries out to, deep cries out to. We cry out to, we cry out to. We're moving into deeper waters, calling after you. We're walking into deeper waters, walking after you. It's 
sing deep cries out to you, 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 we cry out to you, we cry out to you, you Jesus. We sing deep cries out to you, 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 we cry out to you, we cry out to you, Jesus. Hi everyone, at Top Church we've been talking about vision and so today I thought that we could make something that would help us to remember about what vision is. So we are going to make some binoculars. You're going to need a couple of toilet rolls so have a look around your house and see if you can find any and this is going to remind us that when we look into the distance that helps us to have vision for the future. So grab your toilet rolls and some colouring pens and we are going to decorate them. So I've drawn on my binoculars things that I might see through them. All you need to do now when you've finished colouring them in is take them up with a bit of sellotape on the end like this. If you do it on both ends it will be nice and secure and then you will have a pair of binoculars and these will remind us that we are looking to see what's in the distance. That's what vision is, seeing what's coming and what's ahead. So have fun making your binoculars and let it remind you what vision is. So on Thursday, we talked a bit about our ideas for vision for Top Church, and I'm going to share some of that with everybody next week. But this week, I have another question for you, and this is around what's going on now. See, having vision for the future is great, but in order to get there, you have to start doing things now. You have to make changes now so that it affects where you end up in the future. So my question for you, for the youth, is what do you think top church needs now what do you think we need to do and be as a church now to help us to get to the future that we envision chat with your family about it and see if you can come up with those ideas i really look forward to having that discussion um, and finding out what you have to say on thursday Jesus, Jesus, be our 
When Jesus and his disciples were near the town of Caesarea Philippi, he asked them, What do people say about the Son of Man? The disciples answered, Some people say you are John the Baptist, or maybe Elijah, or Jeremiah, or some other prophet. Then Jesus asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter spoke up, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus told him, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed. You didn't discover this on your own. It was shown to you by my father in heaven. So I will call you Peter, which means a rock. On this rock I will build my church, and death itself will not have any power over it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth. But he will not allow anything that you don't allow. Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Hi everyone, can I just uh, extend my welcome as well to our service, our online service today. I'm really pleased that you've tuned in to join us and to um, experience a little bit of Top Church this afternoon or this morning, whenever you're watching it. Now, one of the things that I really miss about Top Church, uh, well, kind of pre-COVID days, was eating together. That was one of our values. It's one of the things we did week after week. We had amazing curries and samosas and um, all different types of food going on. It was absolutely incredible. One thing though uh, that we all loved as well as, the, as well as the samosas was the cake. The cakes were amazing. Particularly Kate and Gwen, they uh, just did some incredible cakes. Uh, Grace Shaw with her banana and chocolate cake which is quite something and no one forgets Shirley's rum cake. Very popular with our youth and um, so it's the cake that we miss. Now you may be wondering why I'm rabbiting on about cake. Well it actually ties in a little bit or quite a lot with our vision statement. On our vision statement we say this, we want to be a thriving Anglican church which is a blessing to our community and a resource to other churches. Now you may be wondering what has that got to do with cake? Well it's simple really. I want to hone in on the first bit of our vision statement at the moment, and that is to be a thriving Anglican church. Now, if you're like me, you've kind of dibbled and dabbled in Anglicanism throughout your life, and then suddenly you find yourself kind of right in the midst of it. And some of it's really exciting and new and curious. Some of it is just weird and kind of bureaucratic, and you can't quite work out anything about it and how it all works. Uh, and it's kind of like life, really. It's a little bit of a mystery at times. 
But actually, to be a thriving Anglican church, I want to suggest what that looks like is simple. It looks like cake. Now, what do I mean uh, by that? Well, it's this really. If, for example, you're making a cake, I am told, but um, I don't make many cakes, so my birthday is coming up, Kate, Gwen, Shirley and Gracie. If you're making a cake, you have um, lots of different ingredients and you can see I have some here and I'm not going to try and make one in front of you. But on their own, none of these ingredients are particularly nice. If you just have a raw egg, that's not very nice. If you just eat lemon, it's not particularly nice. Flour on its own does not work, I'm told. Though I know Ben Coleman likes a little bit of flour. So all those ingredients on their own do not make for a good cake. But actually, the miracle of cakes is you chuck them all together, whisk it around or something, whack it in the oven, and out comes a beautiful cake that you can't wait to eat. Now, Anglicanism, a thriving Anglican church, is a little bit like that kind of cake. Anglican church has got such a mixed and long history that actually it's a church that isn't just one thing. It hasn't just got a really kind of simple route of saying this was it and, you know, we were founded by Jesus and um, it's all very kind of plain sailing since then. Actually, it's a little bit complex. But the beauty of it is, is that it's made up of lots of ingredients that actually when you put them together, it makes something thriving and healthy and wonderful. For example, some of the churches I've actually led, um, we would really focus on some worship or the power of the Holy Spirit, sometimes to the detriment of other things that you need for a healthy church, which might be mission. Or other times, I mean, so focused on the mission of the church that you can kind of neglect actually the worship of the church. Or sometimes you're so focused on being kind of a, a force for good in your area that you forget that actually you're part of a universal Catholic worldwide church. You're not just church on your own in your little patch, you're part of something bigger. And what a thriving Anglican church does is recognise that we need all the different aspects of church. We want to be, as the Anglican church is, reformed. We want to be Catholic, reflecting actually the universal nature of the church, that we don't just stand isolated, we're connected to one another. We want to be a church that relies on the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we pray for at our confirmations, which are coming up in October, that the Holy Spirit will come upon people. We want to be people who recognise Christ in the bread and in the wine. And we want to be people who are committed to what is called our parish, which means that when we exist as a church and I get ordained, we don't exist for ourselves, but we exist for the sake of the community in which we find ourselves in. Now, when you just emphasise one of these things, it just doesn't taste quite right. It's nice for a while, but if it gets a bit unhealthy, you get a bit too fat or a bit too thin, or it just feels a bit sickening, doesn't feel quite right, doesn't really kind of fill you up properly. But when as a church we have health and we have balance and we put together all the ingredients that you need for a healthy church, then we will become and are becoming this thriving Anglican church. So my prayer for us and my question could be for you as well is what ingredients do you need? Not just to make the perfect cake, but what ingredients do you need to make a church that is healthy and thriving? And we believe the things that we've put in place and the things that we adhere to and we teach and we model and we live, we believe those things in the end will produce a thriving Anglican church, which is a blessing to its community and a resource to other churches. And we'll be looking at those other aspects of our vision as time goes on. We have heard about you, God of all power. You made the world out of kindness, creating order out of confusion. You made each one of us in your own image. Your fingerprint is on every soul. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. We have heard about you, Jesus Christ, the carpenter who left his tools and trade, the poor man who made others rich, the healer who let himself be wounded, the criminal on whom the soldiers spat, not knowing they were failing the face of God, the saviour who died and rose again. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. We have heard about you, Holy Spirit. You broke the bonds of every race and nation to let God speak in every tongue. You made the disciples drunk with grace, 
You converted souls and emptied pockets. You showed how love made all things new and opened the doors to change and freedom. So we praise you. We praise and worship you because you make all things beautiful in your time. And together we pray the kingdom prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. We really do hope that this service has blessed you and that you've known the presence of God with you throughout this time that we've shared. We also hope that you feel like you've been worshipping along with all of those that are part of our Top Church community. At 4.45pm today, straight after this service has gone live, we are going to be having a Zoom communion. If you'd like to join us, um, then do email admin at topchurch.co.uk and we'll make sure we get the code sent straight out to you and it would be wonderful to see you there. But as we finish our time together today, we are going to end with a final blessing. May you know the peace of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the healing and mercy of God, this day and all days. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>